Gimbals are an essential part of every filmmaker's repertoire and DJI's RSC2 has made it into a lot of camera bags since it came out 10 months ago. With the release of Zhiyun's WeBuild 2, people were wondering which of the two gimbals is better and today I will help you to figure out which gimbal is the right one for you. What up guys, welcome back to another episode, my name is Eddie Bear and today we have a showdown between two of the hottest gimbals on the market. First contender is the Zhiyun Weeble 2 and the second contestant is the DJI RSC2. So in today's episode we will find out if this 10 month old RSC2 can hold its ground against the new Weeble 2. Full disclosure, DJI was kind enough to supply me with a sample of the RSC2 to make this comparison possible, but they're not paying me to say anything in this video, so all my opinions in this video are my own. With that in mind, I'm going to show you first what comes with the DJI RC2 Pro combo. However, I won't do the same for the WeBuild 2 because I already showed it to you in the original review I made about it. So I'm going to link this one here. Surprisingly, the RC2 Pro combo comes in a quite small package and DJI is reducing the use of plastics and foam to a bare minimum. The carry case of the DJI RSC2 comes divided into two compartments and the first compartment contains all its accessories. In there you will find a tripod mount, a dual lock mounting plate, a smartphone mount, a follow focus motor, an assortment of accessories like focus gear strips, focus motor mounting rods and such. And of course we have also a Raven Eye module which is the image transmission system from DJI and a massive amount of screws to mount everything together. In the second compartment we can find the DJI RSC2 itself and this shows how compact this gimbal actually is when it's folded up. You can even feel how high the build quality of the RSC2 is since most of the gimbal is made out of metal. To fold it up, open the security lock and just fold it together. And of course don't forget to close the lock after, so while you're using it, it's not going to unfold itself again. And of course also inside the box you will find a massive assortment of USB-C to USB connectors so you can operate the RSC2 with most cameras. And last but not least, an assortment of HDMI connectors to connect your Raven Eye to your camera. Now let's talk about some of the specs of the two gimbals, beginning with their weight. It's nice that DJI and Zhiyun state the weight of their gimbals, but you will never just use their bare gimbals without any accessories, so let's see what they throw on the scale with a usable loadout, not counting the cameras. Both DJI and Zhiyun made the weight of their gimbals look a bit better on paper than they actually are. The RSC2 with the tripod and the base plate attached to it comes to 1.5 kilos. The fully assembled Weeble 2, however, goes all the way to almost 2 kilos. Even if you detach the sling grip to make it more comparable, you only come down to 1.8 kilos. That's still 300 grams more weight with a comparable loadout. Since less is more, this point goes to DJI. When we take a look at the maximum payload of the RSC2, it can pack all the way to 3 kilos, while the WeBuild 2 can go all the way to 4 kilos. Either way, both of these gimbal have a lot of room to work with and you will not have any kind of weight limit problems here. And with that said, this point goes to Zhiyun. Size-wise, both gimbals are quite similar to each other if you do not count the sling grip on the WeBuild 2. However, if you rely on a small travel footprint and you are not planning on using the included carrying case, the DJI RSC2 can get smaller thanks to its folding design. This also brings us to our next category, ergonomics and ease of use. A unique ability of the RSC2 is the capability to be folded but not only for storage purposes. If you fold it, you can get the same super close shots through ground like you do with the Zhiyun Weeble 2 when it has the sling grip attached to it. Only downside is you need to unfold it again in order to place it safely on the floor, otherwise it will tip over. Even though I prefer the sling grip option of the Weeble 2, I like the fact that you can achieve the same shots with the RSC2 without the need to install additional accessories. While working with the gimbals, I noticed that they both have their pros and cons when it comes to balancing and switching gear. On the Weeble 2, they mostly use latches to tighten the axis and they have the same kind of knob on every axis lock. This makes it possible to quickly adjust and rebalance your loadout. 
The RSC2, however, uses a combination of thumb screws and latches, and the axes have two kind of knobs on their locks. I wish DJI only used latches and the same knob on every axis lock like they do on the RS2. At the same time, I prefer the roll axis lock on the RSC2. In order to close it, you have to pull it towards you, while on the Weevil 2, you have to push it away from you. And the space on top of that is super narrow. So most of the time, balancing the roll axis takes me way longer than it does on the RSC2. Sometimes small details like these decide whether working with a gimbal becomes tedious or is a joy. Another thing I prefer on the RSC2 is the dual lock mounting plate. Let's say you're taking a few stills at a wedding, you just slide your camera in once you're done and you're ready to shoot within seconds. On the Weebel 2, you first have to rebalance your tilt axis. Another advantage of the dual lock mounting plate is you don't need an additional riser for smaller body cameras like the EOS R and R5 in combination with massive lenses. This way the lens never touches the actual mounting plate. With the Weebel 2, I not only need to install the riser plate so that my lens doesn't touch the camera plate, I also have to add in a lens support so the gimbal does not shake cause of the weight distribution. Now let's talk about control and buttons. I already stated in my Weebel 2 review that I'm not overly happy with the arrangement of its buttons and that it only can be properly controlled with your left hand. Don't get me wrong, the buttons have a great haptic and they are precise, but I think that the overall layout on the RSC2 is better. You're not only able to reach every single button with your left and right hand, you're also able to adjust framing and pulling focus at the same time. In that sense, I think the RSC2 is more versatile than the Weebuild 2. Unfortunately, I have to say I'm on the fence when it comes to the displays of both devices. I love the ease of use the Weebel 2 gives me with its 2.88 inch touchscreen, but at the same time it not only is a massive fingerprint magnet, it also scratches up quite fast through its sliding mechanism. I'm also not the biggest fan of the RC2 display either. Yes, you can read the one inch OLED display well in every lighting condition, but it's quite small and you have no idea about where you are within its menu. You really have to know what you want to adjust, where to find it, and what all the options mean in there. Sometimes you even have to deal with scrolling texts. Once again, I like the implementation on the DJI RS2 better, where you have a fixed small touchscreen, but all the information you need are easily accessible within a good layout. When it comes to gimbal features, they pretty much are on par. The Weevil 2 and the RC2 in an essence have the same modes available. The only difference is that Zhiyun and DJI call certain modes differently. For example, Go mode on the Weebel 2 is Sport mode on the RC2. What Zhiyun calls Vortex mode, DJI calls 360 3D roll. And Zhiyun's point of view mode is DJI's FPV mode. Both gimbals allow the selection of these features through their menus, but DJI also gives you the quick access through certain button combinations. To engage lock mode on the RSC2, keep the trigger button pushed. For portrait mode, double tap the mode button. For 3D roll, tap it three times. Pro tip in 3D roll mode, if you push the joystick to either side twice, it engages in an automatic roll movement which is super helpful. The Weebill 2, however, is lacking an automated vortex mode. To engage sport mode, you just have to keep the mode button pushed. If you want to lock it in, double tap the trigger button. Side note, you can activate sport mode on top of every available mode without the need to adjust them. Such an option unfortunately is also not available on the Weebill 2. This now leaves us with the question, which gimbal is for who? Filming with a gimbal for unexperienced users can be intimidating and that's where the Weebill 2 has its strong suit. It's more suitable for someone who is completely new to filming with a gimbal cause the menu is more user friendly through usage of symbols. This makes the OLED display from the RSC2 feel dated, especially considering that the RS2 is also using a small touchscreen display. Aside from the user interface, the sling grip gives the user more natural way of handling the gimbal than the folding mechanism of the RSC2 does. 
and even the labels on the axes of the Weeble 2 tell users which axis is which. However, the RST2 is for people who know their way around gimbals, because it not only comes with the benefit of being lighter, having more mounting points and even more variations of shooting modes, but it also can be used with your left and right hand. And on top of that, you can also fold it to achieve an even more creative angle. But there's one more thing to consider, pricing. To be able to properly compare the Weeble 2 to the RSC2 Pro Combo package, you at least have to go for the Weeble 2 Pro package because this one also includes an image transmission system and a follow focus motor. The Weeble 2 Pro package will cost you 930 euros, whilst the RSC2 Pro Combo package is only 630 euros. The question now is, would you be willing to pay 300 euros extra for the Weeble 2? What do you think which of these two gimbals is better? Let me know in the comments below. And with that out of the way, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.